Now we're joined by Stephen Lass, uh, the shepherd here in Lyons Estate Farm. Uh, Stephen, day 147, it's been very, very busy so far this morning. Yes, it's day 147. As you can see, the sun is shining outside. We, since 8 o'clock this morning, we have, uh, we have 32 ewes lambed. Uh, we've lost no lambs. Uh, at the minute, lambs are coming quite good. We're getting... Our doubles are kind of producing uh, 14 kilos between the two lambs. Our triplets are coming at four and a half, five kilos. So everything's going well. We're, uh, we're lambing triplets and we're lambing uh, singles, so we're doing a lot of cross-fostering at the minute. Um, uh, yesterday we would have lost, we've lost four lambs yesterday. Uh, up until yesterday, for the early couple, our mortality was running at about 15%. But as the days go along, that will be diluted down because we'll be having a couple of problems, uh, mortalities, and we had we had two caesareans, we lost two lambs there. So we, we're going well. It's um, two o'clock now, as I say. We're hoping to start let, letting yews and lambs back out again. We've lots of grass. The forecast is good. So it's looking promising. We have, since Friday, we, we our hoggets were uh, 147 on Friday. So we've actually finished lambing the hoggets. So all the hoggets have gone out to grass. There's five uh, smaller lambs with their hogs over in the far shed. Hopefully they might get out after dinner. So I would hopefully get another 30 or 40 yews out this shed today. And if the weather keeps up, we'll be putting out yews and lambs every day up until Saturday or Sunday. And hopefully by Sunday, we should have 95% of the shed lambs and hopefully 85% of yews and lambs out to grass. It's fairly concentrated, but I suppose it gets you in, gets you out, and it's, it's part of UCD being involved. We'll talk to Tommy about the central progeny test, but in general, what's your sort of programme? Your your lambs down, are you giving her 18, 24 hours in a pin now that yeah, weather is good? The weather is good, there's no problems. We're, we're, we're into the, we're from the large pen into the mothering up pens, we're tagging the lambs at 12 hours, we're ringing them, we're identifying the lambs, and by 24 hours, we're out to grass. As I said, the weather's so good, there's no complications and there's no problems. If every lambing was as good as this, it would be ideal. If every lambing was as good as this, we'd be very, very happy. And look, at, we have grass, as I say, and we have the sun is shining. If, if, we, if, if this week was a wet week, we would be trying to find pens for yews and lambs. We'd be holding yews and lambs back in pens. The disease pressure in the shed would be building up, and we'd be running into complications and problems. This is just this is ideal lambing week. Plenty of help. I was talking to two years, two students that were here, and they said that it's a fantastic place to be for a week. We're busy. I should look at it. It, it, it. Everything is good. The lambing is going well. The company is well, good. The weather is good. Where else would you want to be this week? It's a fantastic week. And I suppose that's one of the things that often gets on top of farmers is this. A lot of work, a lot of pressure, and uh, when you can see a fine day like that, it takes the, it, it sort of, the, it makes life an awful lot more easier. Uh, you get the weather right, and, and you're getting ewes lambing, and mortality is low, uh, everything is good. Like. Over, but, uh, you, de you need to help, like we're running a 24-hour shifts here, but two 12-hour shifts, so there's somebody in the shed at all times, and that really takes the pressure off, so the guys that are on the day shift, they get a night's sleep and they're ready and fresh and they're invigorated to go the next morning. You mentioned mortality there on a 15, I suppose, just in case anyone is wondering and thinks maybe that that's the norm. You'd be targeting 8 to 10%. We'd be targeting but as I said, like, we've had, we have we've 32 ewes lamb this morning, which is about 64 lambs. No mortality in those. Today we'll be diluting down to 15%. So by next Sunday, whenever we're finished, we will be hoping to be somewhere 8% minus. Now that 8% is not a target per se. If we can get below the 8%, we're happy as well. So I'm joined by Tommy Rowland, uh, Professor of Rumian Nutrition. Tommy, we've talked to Stephen and we've seen that you've over 400 yours to lamb and pretty much, I suppose, over, just shy of two weeks. Why the intensity? I suppose there's a few reasons, Darren, why we've gone to compact lambing. Uh, the farm here fulfil a few functions where probably primary function is education and research really and then we'd also have a commercial side to the farm. So we lamb at this time of the year, okay we're a mid-season lambing flock, but it also coincides with the mid-term break for our undergrad students in Belfield and we bring out 20 to 30 of those undergrad students uh, to help out with the lambing every year. So we don't want to be taking those guys out of lectures, so we need to have the lambing fairly compact so it fits into their two-week mid-term break. 
And that's the first reason, I suppose, why we're so compact. Secondly, then, we're a research farm, um, and it makes our research easier to manage if we have a compact lambing, uh, both from the point of view of our, maybe say, our late pregnancy nutrition. We can be very accurate in our feeding programs, and we would do a lot of work around energy feeding, protein feeding, its impact on colostrum and lamb birth weight and various aspects like that. I suppose then the other reason we're also one of the CPT farms uh, with Sheep Ireland at the moment. So explain CPT to me a bit. Yeah, absolutely. The CPT is Central Progeny Testing. As part of the overall sheep breed improvement program nationally, which is coordinated by Sheep Ireland. And what we do here is we have essentially a commercial flock of yos. So we don't have pedigree yos or purebred yos. We have crossbreds. Uh, we would use rams provided by Sheep Ireland then, and they're mated to a number of our yos. So essentially what we're trying to do is to look at how these top genetics, um, as identified by the star rankings, actually perform in a commercial setting. So you're taking a lot of records in, Tommy, saying, I've seen the students going around, you're taking laminies, you're taking litter size... You'll be coming back in, taking more weights again when the lambs go to grass, 40-day weights, weaning weights, all that sort of thing. Yeah, so, and listen, this is one of the reasons why we lamb at this time of year, so we can have the students here, and they play a huge role in actually collecting that data, and without them, we wouldn't be able to do what, what we're doing here. Um, yeah, so we look at the lamb birth weight, the lamb vigour, the, the yo's mothering instincts, the yo's makeability, and we weigh those lambs again at 40 days of age. The lamb weight at 40 days of age is pretty much reflective of the yo's ability to produce milk. You know, so we're looking for lambs that grow well up to 40 days of age. It means their mothers are good milky sheep, and they're the ones we want to keep replacements from. We look then again at the weaning weight to see how the lambs are performing up to weaning. Um, we also take various other characteristics like lamb mortality. We look at DAG scores for, as an indicator of parasite burden or faecal egg count. And we'll also look at lameness. So there's a huge amount of data being collected on the flock here. I suppose you've been lucky heading into St. Patrick's Day. You'd have a lot of your yaws and lambs out to grass, which is what every sheep farmer wants. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you look around the countryside this year, there's a huge amount of grass out there. We've been extremely lucky. Uh, the weather has really picked up in the last two or three days for us here. So we're getting yaws and lambs out to, the, out to grass at, you know, 24, 36, 48 hours of age. And that's, that's ideal for us, really. We don't want to have sheep hanging around inside in the shed. The longer you keep them in, you're building the risk of picking up infection, put you under more pressure for space. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're getting on really well this year and getting yos and lambs out. Tommy, uh, given all that's going on today, I think it's fair to say we'll definitely be back for your 40 day away and then maybe we'll do a snapshot or an update in and where things are going throughout the year. Excellent, you're welcome Lauren. So, Tomás, you're weighing lambs with uh, Sheep Ireland? Yeah. Uh, all lambs are weighed at 12 hours of age, once they're bright. Then they're tagged with an EID tag and a tissue tag. And sent back to the lab for tests. And that's, say, uh, all to do with performance recording. UCD is performance record of flocks. Yeah. It's one of our central progeny test units. So that data that you're collecting, are you storing that in on a handheld computer? Yeah, it's all going into a handheld, then sent back to the database in Bannon and Cork. In the How long does it take you roughly, say, to get a yo and two lambs, the information put through the system? Only about three minutes. So here at Mwade Fox and Sarah Tuffy, uh, girls, you're on lambing experience. Uh, your final day, is it? How long of a stint have you been doing? Wait. Friday evening, so we've been here Saturday and Sunday. Eight to eight. eight. Uh, Long day. Have you been? Are you sheep farmers? Are you in? Are you da your dairy? My dairy. No experience with sheep, so it was good experience. There. There's no, I've absolutely no farming experience, so it's good to have experience in here. Has there been a big learning curve, so Sarah? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I've been on farms before, but like nothing to this. Have you ever delivered lambs before this, or is this your first no, time? No, I only ever watched as a young child. So it's a big, yeah. it's a big step up. Yeah, and I just turn in the deep end, they're like, right, go see how she is. I'm like, okay. <laughs> right, what has been the most daunting thing you've done over the last few days? Interesting. Uh, have to say, when the vet was here doing a cesarean, I suppose. You can see what was <laughs> the nervous was as well. <laughs>